Have you ever wondered how a tiny seed becomes a full-grown plant? The journey begins in the soil, the unsung hero of agriculture. The soil is more than just dirt, it's a complex ecosystem that holds the key to plant growth and development. The soil's composition, nutrient content and pH level are critical factors that dictate the success of a crop. Let's start with the soil composition. The ideal soil is a balanced mix of sand, silt and clay. This provides a good structure for root growth and water movement. The nutrient content of the soil is the next essential factor. Nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are like the plant's food, fueling its growth and development. And then there's the pH level. This measures how acidic or alkaline the soil is. Some crops prefer acidic soil, while others thrive in alkaline conditions. Understanding the science of soil is the first step to successful farming. How does a plant transform sunlight into food? The answer lies in a fascinating process called photosynthesis. Let's dive right in. Photosynthesis is like a magic trick that plants perform daily, turning sunlight into sustenance. It's a complex yet utterly fascinating process that starts when a plant's leaves absorb sunlight. This sunlight is the energy source that powers the whole operation. The plant also takes in carbon dioxide from the air around it. Tiny pores on the plant's leaves, known as stomata, act like little gateways allowing carbon dioxide to enter. At the same time, the plant's roots absorb water from the soil. This water and carbon dioxide are the raw materials that the plant uses to create its food. Now let's imagine the inside of a leaf as a miniature factory. There's a special area called the chloroplast, where the magic happens. The chloroplasts contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which gives plants their green color. More importantly, chlorophyll is the catalyst that enables the sunlight, water and carbon dioxide to react with each other. In this reaction, the water and carbon dioxide combine to form glucose, a type of sugar, and oxygen. The glucose is used by the plant for growth and repair, and the oxygen, a byproduct of this process, is released back into the atmosphere. And voila! That's photosynthesis in a nutshell. It's like the plant is cooking up a meal using sunlight, carbon dioxide and water as ingredients, and the end product is food for the plant and oxygen for us to breathe. In the context of farming, understanding photosynthesis is vital. It's the key to knowing when and how to water your plants, how to ensure they get enough sunlight, and even which type of plants will thrive in your specific environment. It's all about creating the perfect conditions for photosynthesis to occur, because the more efficiently a plant can perform photosynthesis, the healthier and more productive it'll be. Photosynthesis is nature's own food factory, and understanding it is crucial for successful farming. Did you know that your local weather and climate play a huge role in what you can grow and when? Yes indeed, the weather and climate are like a blueprint for farmers. They guide them to understand which crops will thrive and which will struggle. Let's break it down. Weather refers to the short-term atmospheric conditions like rain, wind, temperature, and humidity. These immediate conditions can greatly affect the growth of crops. For instance, a sudden frost can damage a crop overnight, while a week of heavy rain can drown plants that prefer drier conditions. On the other hand, climate is the long-term pattern of weather in a particular area. It's the broader picture that includes seasons and annual rainfall patterns. A region's climate dictates the types of crops that can be grown there. For example, you won't find many apple orchards in a tropical climate, simply because apples require a cold winter to produce fruit. Different crops require different conditions. Some crops like wheat and corn are hardy and can withstand varying conditions, while others like rice and oranges require specific temperature and rainfall patterns to prosper. This is where the science comes in. Farmers use scientific knowledge to understand these patterns. They study the local weather and climate, and choose the crops that best suit the conditions. They might even use technology to simulate conditions for crops that wouldn't naturally grow in their area. For instance, farmers might use greenhouses to grow tomatoes year-round despite the winter cold. They might use irrigation systems to water crops in arid regions. It's all about understanding the science behind the weather and climate and using that knowledge to optimize growth. So next time you see a field of flourishing crops, remember that it's not just the result of hard work, but also a testament to the farmer's understanding of the local weather and climate. With the science of weather and climate, farmers can make informed decisions about what to plant and when. So yes, farming is indeed a science, a beautiful blend of understanding nature and harnessing its power for cultivation. Farming isn't just about sowing seeds and waiting for them to grow. Modern farming techniques are now more scientific and sophisticated than ever. 
The age-old image of a farmer tilling the land under the sun has evolved into a picture of technology-infused agriculture. Take hydroponics, for instance. This method allows plants to grow in nutrient-rich water, eschewing soil altogether. It's a real game-changer. By delivering nutrients directly to plant roots, hydroponics allows for faster growth rates and larger yields. It's like giving plants a first-class ticket to growth. Then, there's vertical farming. Picture a multi-story building but instead of offices or apartments, each floor is a lush green garden. Vertical farming takes advantage of vertical space to produce more food per square foot than traditional farming methods. It's high-rise agriculture if you will, but these modern techniques aren't just about increasing yield. They're also about sustainability. Hydroponics uses less water than traditional farming, making it a boon in regions where water is scarce. And vertical farming? It can be done indoors, reducing the need for pesticides, and minimizing the impact on the local ecosystem. These methods aren't just theoretical, they're already in practice, changing the way we grow our food. From rooftop gardens in urban areas to large-scale hydroponic farms, these techniques are shaping the future of agriculture. These modern techniques show that farming is as much about science as it is about tradition. So, what have we learned about the science of farming? We've delved into the world beneath our feet, exploring the scientific principles of soil. We've enlightened ourselves about the magic of photosynthesis, the process that turns light into life. We've weathered the intricacies of climate and its impact on farming. And lastly, we have ventured into the realm of modern farming techniques, where tradition meets innovation. With a deeper understanding of the science behind farming, we can appreciate the hard work and knowledge that goes into growing our food.